Hey friends and foes, welcome to Brushwork Podcast. My name is Stephanie Scott, and today we're talking about how to visit an art museum for artists. The other day, I was visiting the Seattle Art Museum, and I realized I haven't really talked about my art rituals that I do outside of the studio. Feeding your eyes is one of the most important things for the creative spirit, and visiting an art museum is a great way to get a punch of inspiration into your work. If you've ever been to a bunch of galleries right in a row, or a large art museum and have been exhausted or zoned out by the time you're ready to leave, this episode of Brushwork is absolutely for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your museum viewing experience, and tell you the rules I like to follow when doing this myself. I came up with this system in my mid-twenties, and I have never looked back. I will warn you though, you might feel uncomfortable the first time you do it the Brushwork way, so allow yourself to feel the edge it provides and get into the truth of experiencing artwork on a grand stage of a museum. Are you ready for the rules? Rule number one, go alone. This might be terrifying for some of you, but I want you to do it anyways. By being by yourself, you will focus more on the art, the ambiance of the space, and your own thoughts. Which, I know, is scary, but <laughs> in order to feel the intensity of the art pieces you're looking at to feel everything that they could tell you, you you need to be by yourself. When you're by yourself, when you are by yourself, you have more awareness. You have the agency to see the artwork that you want to see. And the whimsy of that will allow you the chance to look deeper at the artwork and at yourself. You will also have more flexibility of when you're able to go to the art museum. Just logistically, it's easier. You're not limited to going to the museum after, you know, your friend is done with work and, and you're like, there's only an hour before the museum closes, but that's enough time to see it all, right? Mm, wrong. <laughs> if you must go to the museum with someone else, make it another artist-minded person. Make it someone that will understand what you're doing and that this artist date, which is basically what we're doing here, the solo artist date, is designed to help you see things and to help you really get into the act of seeing like an artist sees. I want you to imagine that you're going there alone together, right? So we're not talking to them. We're not following them around, wondering where they're going or what their plan is. You're going to be making your own plan with your own rules here. And hopefully if you both follow it, then it'll work. But otherwise, just that's an extra step that you don't need to take. Go by yourself. It's so much fun. I promise it's fun. And I'm going to tell you how to make it fun. Now, if you're here and you're thinking, but Stevie, I'm visiting a city with a group of people and we're all going to go do this or that tourist, you know, attraction together. How do I get alone? Okay, in that case, if you have other people with you who want to go to the art museum, probably because you're an artist, this is so real. I can't even count the number of times people have been like, oh, I want to go to the art museum with you. That sounds so fun. It's because you're the expert friend. If this is the case, then your art visit is going to be a social visit. And I need you to make the distinction between this artist date and the social visit to the art museum. It's different. They have different jobs. And the socializing is very important. I would say that, you know, if you do get the opportunity to go to an art museum with potentially a client in the future, a future collector, you should do that. Because discussing the work and getting them to be in the... I guess the mood to make art and to be around art is very important for your business. However, we're going to focus today on the solo trip, right? So if you are visiting a very far away museum and you're like, I don't know if I'll ever get to come back here. I want you to have the, the affirmation that, you know, I'm going to live for a long time, like a really, really long time. And I can come back here. Maybe you could even go back the next day, you know, early in the morning. <laughs> so think about it. This is a solo trip. A solo date for going alone. And for this exercise and seeing, you got to do it by yourself. Okay. Rule number two, bring a sketchbook and also a super sharp pencil and an eraser. Okay. If you are here and you're listening to this episode and you're, you're, you're probably the kind of artist that wants to get really good. You want to be really, really good at your trade, really good at your craft, really good at seeing and also making. I'm not here to give you fluff or mysticism about art. I'm here to help you make great art. And that means you need to be bringing your sketchbook to the art museum. You're here at the museum not to have fun. I mean, you might have fun on accident. That's nice. <laughs> but you're here to study, right? You're here to really learn the paintings, the drawings, whatever craft it is you're here to study. You're here to observe it to its fullest. When you're in the museum, you're going to be picking paintings and drawings and sculptures, and you're going to do value studies of them with your pencil. 
Most museums allow you to bring drawing supplies as long as they are dry. So we're not talking inks, just pencils and eraser. Some might even allow you to bring a chair or use a chair. And really big museums often have easels that you could borrow if you needed them. I would always check before you go, but if that's something you need, you should take advantage. What I love about drawing, even if it's not your main medium, like I'm an abstract oil painter, but drawing sharpens your eye. It teaches you composition, studying the masters, learning what the contemporary artists of your day are making, and getting your body into the kinetic learning of, you know, taking your pencil and putting it onto the page is a surefire way to quickly improve your work. As an abstract artist, can you guess what I tend to draw the most? <laughs> it's portraits and landscapes. Whenever I go to an art museum and I have my sketchbook with me, I like to get as uncomfy as possible. I'm like, how can I pay attention the most? And that means for me, going to a landscape painting and making a value study of it, trying to get the composition, trying to focus my brain on something that is so different than what I make because I'm gonna learn something from it. I like to give each sketch 20 minutes before I move on to the next piece of art. Sometimes I'll take longer, but we're not trying to make finished pieces of art here, right? These are sketches, they're value studies, they're composition studies, whatever you need to study or what's being called to you when you look at a painting or a sculpture or whatever it is you want to draw, um, do that, do that and do it for 20 minutes, do it for a while. Sometimes when I'm in an art museum for a while, or I've visited it many, many times, like for me, the Seattle Art Museum, I like to sketch out interesting patterns in the floor. Sometimes I like to draw the space itself. I'll add in thoughts I'm thinking about each painting. Sometimes I journal about my day if I'm really distracted. I'm like, I have so many things on my to-do list after this. If I can't get my brain to focus on the art, I will take five minutes and quickly journal out everything so it's on a paper and I know I'm not gonna forget it because it's there and I can read it later. Your sketches and your journals are not going to be beautiful. They're not supposed to be beautiful. They're supposed to help you learn. And afterwards, when you get back home, you can spray a fixative on them to keep them from smudging if you really want to. But otherwise, it's kind of fun to have a sketchbook that's for your dirty museum drawings. I have a couple of them and they're fantastic. So rule number two, bring a sketchbook. Rule number three, nonverbal music. I have this opinion about audio guides that museums hand out that is... Not popular, <laughs> we're gonna call it a hot take. And this opinion is that you shouldn't listen to the audio guides if you're an artist. If you are someone who is in the profession, in the field, don't go for the audio guides. Instead, I want you to go for nonverbal music. Those guides, they're great for getting you quickly through an exhibit. They're great about you know teaching you stories about the work and they're good for people who aren't familiar with work. And you know that might also be you. You might be an artist and unfamiliar with the work. But if you're here to study, I want you to skip them because what your eyes can tell you about the painting is gonna be more important than what you hear from your audio guide as someone who is a visual learner. I want you to remember that today, you're here at the museum to see. So bring your headphones, your AirPods, whatever listening device you prefer and select some non-verbal music. It's important that the music doesn't have any words. Words are like candy to artists, right? And they, they distract you and they cause you to daydream. They're candy, and I want you to focus on your vision. So here I'm just gonna mention a couple of sources of nonverbal music that I really enjoy. They're all very contemporary. I'm a fan of cafe background music. They're on YouTube. I like the Journey soundtrack from the video game. Studio Ghibli has some great covers that are excellent, and you know, there's always Lo-Fi Girl. Look for relaxing, calm music that's gonna help you stay in the flow of the museum. The headphones also have two bonuses, right? They subtly say, Hey, don't disturb me when people are curious about their draw about your drawing. When you're sketching in an art museum, lots of times kids will come over, people will come over, and they'll look over your shoulder and they want to see what you're doing because it's interesting and it's interactive and it's live. If you have your headphones on, they're not going to talk to you. I mean, they might try. Can't say. I can't promise never, but it definitely deters a lot of people. I actually have a friend who made a shirt that says, "I'm an artist. Don't talk to me." Um, on the back of it, so when people see them drawing, they don't they don't get disturbed. It's very effective, actually. <laughs> At this point, it's probably good to say rule 3.5 is to put your phone on do not disturb. It's so easy to get distracted by your cell phone in an art museum. It's, it's so easy to be like, oh, I'm just gonna look this up. It's better to not look at your phone at all, right? You, you walk into the museum, you buy your ticket, you pick your music as you're going up the escalator or whatever. 
And um, then you put the phone away, right? So you're you're not looking, you're not hearing notifications through your headphones. Try and try and be on do not disturb for the duration of your visit. Rule number four is don't see everything. Every time I say this to people, they're like, what? <laughs> if your local museum is huge, like the Met, you're gonna need to choose carefully what you want to see. Trying to see it all is a great way to be exhausted and numb at the end of your visit, making you basically never want to return. I highly recommend making a plan of attack. At my last visit to the SAM, the Seattle Art Museum, I decided to see abstract work and the special exhibit. To my, to my dismay, because I forgot to check the website, the special exhibit was still being worked on, so I settled on just the second floor abstractions. The Seattle Art Museum has thousands of pieces of art in their collection. By narrowing it down to just the abstracts on display, I'm able to give each of these work my full attention. I won't be lost trying to figure out what to see next, and I certainly won't be spending less than 10 seconds with each piece of art rushing to the next. Remember, especially for your local museums, you can come back and see other things. You can come back often. I have a year pass with the art museum because I, I go so frequently. This is another reason not to go with other people. Some visitors of the museum must see everything. You know, they probably got a checklist. They're like, we got to go to this exhibit and we got to go to this piece of art. And we got to see this one and this one and this one. If we don't see it all, my vacation is ruined. Like I'm exaggerating here, but am I exaggerating? I feel like every single one of you listeners knows of a person who does this. And maybe you're that person in which case I say, do less, <laughs> see less things. You'll have a better time. I promise. Rule number five is to take your time. One thing I love about listening to music while at the museum is that it gives me a low effort timer. If I'm viewing a painting, I like to spend the length of at least one song while looking at it. Typically three to five minutes, right? If I'm sketching a painting, then I listen to four to seven songs, which is about 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> the biggest struggle of my life right now is to look at a piece of art for more than 10 seconds on my cell phone. I just, I open up the apps and I flip through the work I see online and I just, I'm just trained to do this. I'm just trained to endlessly scroll. You probably do the same, right? It's addicting and I'm not about to scroll my way through an art museum. I want to really take my time. I, I, I made the effort to go there in person. I made the effort to see the work and be surrounded by it. So I'm going to let myself have plenty of time to see what I planned to see. Recently, I watched this video of an exercise to help you understand painting better. The exercise is you simply sit in front of it for three hours, right? That sounds insane. I'm just, <laughs> three hours is a long time. You sit in front of it and you notice the surface image and you get bored and then you notice more details and then you get antsy and you look and you look and you look and you look and it's been three hours and then you understand the painting better than ever. This is an exercise, I believe from a school or something. If I can find it, I will link it after I've typed up the episode notes, but it's just... How much time can you take with a painting? How much time have you given your own paintings as you've made them? I will spend 50 hours making an abstract painting and I'll spend less than a minute looking at other people's art. I don't like that. I want to spend more time. So this is my encouragement to you. Take three to five minutes and stare at one piece. Take 15 to 20 minutes and sketch out a second one, right? Or you could even do this. You could stare at a painting and journal. I'm about to give you rule number six that'll lead to that. But if you pick even one of these tasks and do them for each painting that is on your on your plan of attack, then you're gonna have a much more enriched and focused and just a greater learning about the artwork you've seen today versus if you were just to walk by them casually, you know, a little drive by. <laughs> the last time I was at the art museum, I spent time observing other people looking at the art and there was lots of, Oh, we're going to walk by it. And I just look and then I look at the next one and I still walk. We don't stop. We just keep walking. <laughs> it did look like, um, just like they're on cruise control. It was, it was pretty funny, but I was like, you know, you got to stop. You got to stare and you got to, you got to not care that other people are, you know, there to also look at the art. If they want to see it, they can stand next to you. Like take your time. The three exercises I really recommend when you're in the art museum and you've got your sketchbook is to, one, look at the painting for three to five minutes. Two, sketch what you see for 20. Or three, stare at a painting and journal about it. And journal about it for 10 minutes or so. And this leads me to rule number six. Ask the artwork questions. When I'm looking at a painting I'm not familiar with, I like to ask it these questions. 
Sometimes I journal about them. Sometimes I say them in my head. You're going to do whatever works for you, but just asking questions like this and whatever else questions shows up when you're in the midst of it is very good. And it, it really gets your brain active <laughs> and thinking. And it's, it's really good. So here are the questions. Number one, what is obvious? Number two, what is subtle? Number three, what can I see immediately? Number four, what can I see once three minutes has gone by? Number five, what delights me? Number six, what annoys me? Number seven, what key is this painting in? Is it high key? Is it low key? Number eight, what is strong about the composition? Number nine, what is my favorite color relationship within the piece? Number 10, how would I describe this painting to someone who couldn't see it? Number 11, what characteristics of this painting could I use in my own work? Number 12, how does this painting make me feel? Number 13, is this painting better up close or far away? Number 14, do I like this painting? Why or why not? And number 15, where would I put this painting if it was not here in this museum? Those are very fun questions. It's fun to journal with them. Make up your own list of questions. Make it, you know, 10, 15 questions long and ask these about each painting you're staring at. I promise you'll have conversations with the paintings. They will talk to you. They'll speak to you. They will tell you their secrets. They will tell you nothing sometimes. And it's extremely interesting. <laughs> My last rule for today is rule number seven. You're going to spend two to three hours maximum in the museum. I feel like sometimes I hear from artists, they, they want to spend all day long in an art museum, right? They just spend hours and hours and hours and hours. I really encourage you to spend a max of two or three hours. Keep it shorter. Keep it fresh in your head. By limiting the number of hours you spend in the museum, you're going to eliminate visual fatigue. What you do after the art museum also matters, right? So after you spent your two or three hours looking at fabulous paintings, I would go have a snack. Go look at the outdoor landscape. Maybe it's a beautiful day out. Maybe it's pouring rain. Do something physical. Go on a walk. Go find your bus. I don't know. <laughs> your mind is going to need time to absorb everything you've just experienced. So let your mind have that time. Don't be rushing into the next big event. Don't be rushing into seeing a movie or reading a book. Like, try to let your brain absorb all the information it got from all those paintings. Again, I say paintings, and I also mean sculptures or drawings or whatever it is you really love to look at. I have a couple of other rules that aren't really rules, but more like guidelines. And these are just common sense things. So one, we're wearing comfy shoes. You're going to eat before you go, so you're not like, <laughs> you, you show up to the art museum and your stomach's growling. We, we don't want that. Uh, come caffeinated if you're a caffeine person, like you have your Diet Coke, you have your tea time, whatever it is. Do that before you go to the museum. Leave things at coat check, right? So you're not carrying your backpack around or your heavy things. Bring your student ID if you have one, because sometimes you can get discounts. For my trip to the Seattle Art Museum, I paid $33, and that was for an adult ticket, for one. Some, t some museums have pay what you can options. Some of them have are like by donation. And that's interesting. Look at the pricing and the scales on their websites because they will tell you all sorts of things. There's all sorts of discounts and you know, you can always just ask. All in all, people want you to come to their art museums. And so if you feel like you can't afford a full price ticket, just just talk to someone and they will they will make something work for you. And the last thing is to uh, make sure you check the hours before you go and see if they have a free day. I know in New York at the Med, they have free Tuesday admission from 5 p.m. to close, right? So it's first come, first serve, and you just get in for free. That's so excellent and so accessible. I hope this guide has been helpful for you and that you take yourself on many art museum dates. What sort of things do you do when you go to the art museum? Do you have little rituals that you do? Do you like to do something that I haven't mentioned? I would love to hear it in the comments. And if you get a chance and you can review the podcast after listening to this one, that would be most excellent. It helps me out. It helps me reach more artists. And I really appreciate you, my listeners. You can find me at stephaniescott.art. That's my website and also my Instagram handle. I hope you have a great day and you make good choices. See you later now. Bye.